Humans alone have developed religion because they're the only species that have imagination. The popular anthropological explanation for the innumerable religions that have been formed has been uh, that religion promotes social bonding. It, gives, it can give people hope while at the same time be exploited for power. Our closest biological relatives, apes and monkeys, are understood to have societal structure, hierarchy, and moderately developed culture. However, no other animal but humans is understood to have developed the ability to imagine. Humans are thought to have evolved this ability during the Upper Paleological Revolution, about 50,000 years ago, when cave paintings of real and imaginary animals and things started appearing on cave walls, and artifacts started being found with buried remains. Since then, we've had the ability to imagine things and beings that don't physically exist and the possibility that people can live on after they die. Once we'd done that, we had access to a form of societal interaction that no other creature had. Belief in the imaginary could become something that could unify and divide people. People's groups and cultures started intimately associating imaginary things. Not only were people in social groups, but there started being ancestors and spirits and animals in social groups and other parts of nature. It was, uh, it started being considered what those long dead ancestors would have thought of what we should do, about honor to them and what they would think, even though they weren't, even though they were imaginary. Even today in modern American culture and generally Western and other, we, uh, we imagine, we can imagine dead family members uh, watching over us and we can fear things that we imagine. How many times after watching a scary movie or something do you kinda, you know, you're, wa you're walking alone in the dark and you kinda imagine something, you know, that obviously came from the movie and it's obviously not actually there and doesn't exist at all. But you still have a physical, biological response to your imagined fear. Now it's one thing to be walking in the Serengeti and imagine, you know, if you hear a little noise and you imagine a lion is going to come attack you. But if you're imagining a ghost, a, a doll, you know, the, uh, a demon coming to attack you, that's different, and that is not helpful to your survival. I've attached a link to Maurice Block's work with his research in this.